Oh man, this is hilarious. You do not see party fouls like this one every single day. So if you're an Epic Games dev, or if you're just somebody who has ever had anything to do with Unreal Engine ever, then you probably got your inbox flooded after Rohith Sridharan, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, but Rohith here made this epic pull request and basically replied all on it. That's just a quick rundown of what happened here if you don't use GitHub. Just a mistake made by a young developer that likely resulted in millions of emails getting sent out to people. But actually, if, if you really think about what is going on here, you can come to the conclusion, like I have, that Rohith Sridharan actually did nothing wrong, okay? Epic Games is actually in my opinion, misusing GitHub's groups feature, okay? Because this developer group that has almost 400,000 people in it that Rohith added, uh, the only reason that that group exists is because Epic Games requires people to join that group in order to see the Unreal Engine source code, okay? Which of course, tons of people do, right? Tons of people wanna do game development and this is a pretty good game engine to use for doing that. So tons of people end up joining the Unreal Engine uh, games group, but Epic Games, they could just make the source code, they could just make the repository for Unreal Engine public. And then you wouldn't have to join this group. You wouldn't even need to have a GitHub account to download it. But no, instead, they make you do all of this stupid bullshit so that you can get access to their repo. Look at this, six steps that you have to go through to get access to the Unreal Engine source code when it really should just be one, download the code from GitHub. But since so many people wanna act like this is a super big deal, I mean, we got people like uh, Trevok here saying, shut it down, lock it, lock it. This is a friendly message, but we need to get OP banned because he's a terrible person he's doing gross social misconduct by not checking how many people are in a group before he adds it okay I mean yeah you, you should do that all right you should do that it's it's uh, a bit of a party foul that's what I'll call it but it's also just stupid that this massive group even exists in the first place uh, don't be like a Trevog be more like a Johnson Christopher just unsubscribe just unsubscribe from the group ignore the emails and call it a day instead of trying to say that a young dev needs to get banned. But since so many people want to make this a big deal and act like Rohith is some epic troll that just tried to crash GitHub, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of artistic liberties with telling this story to make it as big a deal as people are making it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the somewhat fictional story of our hero, Rohith. It was Friday, June 3rd, 2022. Young Rohith awoke with the rising sun, as he always does. His first task of the day was the same as any other, sending out hundreds of wholesome good morning messages to his friends and family on WhatsApp. After sending several terabytes worth of animated GIFs back and forth, Rohith had successfully clogged the Facebook botnet once again. But jamming up Facebook was child's play for Rohith. Between the sheer number of boomer posts involving minion memes and QAnon members waiting for the second coming of JFK, Facebook had been perpetually on the brink of collapse for years now. So young Rohith set his sights upon another botnet, GitHub. He knew that the task would be tough, especially since GitHub was acquired by Microsoft, a champion of information security, as we all know. But his determination was strong and his senses were keen. He saw a weakness in GitHub's design, the Epic Games Repository, which had a group of over 300,000 members. Rohith acted swiftly. He created a completely unnecessary pull request, perfect for gorgeous looks, can push ASAP, with a follow-up message to verify the pull request and merge ASAP. After notifying all 400,000 Epic Games developers, Rohith peacefully went to bed, satisfied with what he had done. But as the sun rose on Europe and Burgerland, utter chaos started to ensue. 
People's inboxes were flooded with requests to do the needful. GitHub's servers were struggling to keep up with the millions of queued emails that were building up from this chain reaction. Worshippers of the botnet desperately pleaded to shut it down to maintain the status quo, but it was too late. Pandora's box had been opened, and the Google Play cards had been redeemed. After a couple of years, the number of queued emails had grown past six gorillion. Samsung, Seagate, and Western Digital had all been ordered by the globalist government to put all of their effort into crafting hard drives for Microsoft's GitHub servers to contain the growing email queue. This action was able to stall the collapse of the servers for a couple of decades, but despite every single hard drive manufacturer going bankrupt by making free hard drives for Microsoft, the effort was not enough. And on July 1st, 2042, all of GitHub's and Microsoft's servers collapsed under the weight of Rohit's mighty pull request. The moment this happened, Richard Stallman the Grey was sitting atop the Andes Mountains meditating when he felt a great disturbance in the force as if the evils of proprietary software had been severely weakened. He then pulled out his Libre booted ThinkPad and checked his emails in Emacs, and he realized that the market share of GNU Linux had risen to over 70% as Windows users desperately clinged on to any operating system that would let them play their precious games. Stallman the Grey knew at this point that he must launch a full-scale GNU Jihad against proprietary software. It was now or never that software freedom would be achieved. Microsoft was swiftly defeated. A brigade of Arch users under the order of Stallman hacked Microsoft's remaining servers, attempted to install Arch to them, and then rice their desktops. After the attack, not a single server was able to boot past a TTY. Apple was a bit tougher to defeat. Since they are Unix-based and incredibly rich, they were able to survive Rohit's initial pull request by converting literal wheelbarrows full of money into solid gold petabyte hard drives through high-level alchemy. But Stallman the Grey, being the highly intelligent war general that he was, found a way to defeat Apple as well. Using technology that was stolen from Elon Musk's penthouse apartment and then made GPL-3, Stallman the Grey was able to raise an army of Neko girls that stormed Apple's headquarters, killing every iOS and Mac developer in sight. The battle ended with Richard Stallman slaying Tim Apple himself. The world was finally rid of proprietary software. Stallman the Grey looked around at all the great work he had done before transforming into a ball of light and ascending to Nirvana along with Rohith. Generations of children will look back at the day that Rohith, a self-described noob developer, pushed over the first domino that would lead to victory in the GNU slash Jihad and the establishment of the kingdom of GNU slash Jhana here on Earth.